There's a helicopter outside. Ooh, he's asking how. Jay and today I'm here with my March wrap up for 2019. I read a total of 11 books this month but I'm going to split them into two parts so this is part one the first five books that I read so without further ado let us get started. So I'm gonna start off with the graphic novels that I read this month. I read a total of two. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is called Hocus Pocus The Legends of Grimm's Woods. This is by Monroe and Gobray. It doesn't say the author's first names, so that's what we're going with. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. So this is a choose-your-own-adventure graphic novel. It makes for a really cool reading experience. It basically follows siblings Hocus and Pocus and they are on a journey to find the two missing children, Jack and Jill. You can either play as Hocus or Pocus and you can also choose one out of three companion animals to go along with you on your journey. Graphics are super colorful and fun. I think they're definitely going to grab the attention of the middle grade audience that this is geared towards and I definitely think that is a really entertaining way to read a story. I personally read a lot of Goosebumps books when I was younger and my favorites were the Choose Your Own Adventures ones, so I was super excited when I saw that there was a graphic novel Choose Your Own Adventure. There's multiple different pathways that you can end up going on, but you always end up at the same ending no matter what. It's a book that you can play multiple times without exhausting your options, so I think that is going to be super fun once it's released. I read this on ebook format, so it was kind of hard to do the page flips because it was an ebook, but I think that as like a hard copy of the book, flipping the pages will be super easy and super fun. So I'm really excited for kids to get to read this because I think it's going to be a really fun option for them. The next graphic novel that I read was a comic book. It was Dream Daddy, a dating game simulator comic. <laughs> And it was by Leighton Gray and Vernon Shaw, who are the creators of the video game that this is based off of. It basically follows the five dads that are featured in this video game. I've personally never played the game, so I didn't really know anything about these dads at all, but it is a super popular game. I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 for this reason because there wasn't any backstory for the dads' personalities or why they were acting certain ways, so it was just kind of a bunch of stories thrown together. It's five different stories following the five dads. I thought that the graphic style changing for each chapter of the comic book was really interesting. I really liked how it switched it up. But yeah, like I said, just because I don't know the backstory of the dads, I wasn't fully invested in the story. They were cute, but other than that, there's not really much to say. I'm sure if you've played the games and you read these stories, it would mean a lot more to you. But here we are. So now moving on to the books that I read this month. The first one that I read was called Ink, Iron, and Glass and this is by Gwendolyn Cole. So in this universe, worlds are made by scriptologists who use a special pen and book to expand their worlds. Elsa is a scriptologist who lives in a world created by her mother through this method and one day Elsa's mother goes missing and she has to travel to 19th century Italy in order to ask for help. When she arrives, she discovers a secret society of teenagers Teenagers who are scriptologists as well as mechanics and alchemists. She ends up meeting a mechanist named Leo and his friends and they are the ones who set out to help her find her mother and save the world. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. Personally, I don't think that it caught my attention until about three quarters throughout the book. I thought it started off really, really slowly. There was just a giant info dump at the beginning of the book, which definitely slowed my progress a lot. I didn't find myself wanting to pick the book up. It did eventually get more exciting as the story progressed, but I think that this is a case of the concept was very intriguing but it wasn't executed very well. The characters were all very average to me. I didn't connect with any of them on like a personal level. I just didn't really care what happened to them. The only reason I ended up picking up this book was because I won a arc of the second book in the series by the author's giveaway so I figured I need to read the first book before I can read the second book. But it wasn't anything super memorable for me, but I will continue just because I have the art. The next book that I have is My Heart and Other Black Holes by Jasmine Wanga. Wanga? 
one of those two. I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. I ended up liking it a lot more than I initially thought I would. The book follows 16 year old Azel who has been contemplating suicide ever since her father committed a crime that shook the community. Azel doesn't believe that she will be able to follow through with her plan alone so she logs onto a website in order to find a suicide partner. While online she meets somebody who calls himself Frozen Robot otherwise known as Rowan. Together they start planning their suicide but as time goes on and and the two teenagers become closer, Azel starts to second guess herself and it decides that this isn't what she wants and she now needs to convince Roman that that's not what he wants either. I enjoyed this book for the most part but the biggest complaint that I do have for it is that it's so strong with the love cures all trope. Personally I'm not a big fan of this trope but other than that I did really enjoy the story. I think that Azel and Roman are both really great characters. I really sympathized for both of them and what they were both going through. Both of their feelings were just so well put onto paper. I really liked watching them grow in their friendship and learn to trust each other. I think that the author did an amazing job dealing with mental illness and the depression representation was really well done in my opinion. I think that the author did a really great job in putting the feelings that a lot of people have on a daily basis into words and I think that it might help a lot of people if they read this book but obviously a big trigger warning for suicide thoughts and things along that nature. The next book I was not a big fan of. I gave it two out of five stars but it is The Future of Us by Jay Asher and Caroline Mackler. This is another one that the premise sounded really cool but the execution was not for me. It follows Emma and Josh who are neighbors in 1996. They used to be very close to one another but something happened between them that caused them to drift apart and then one day Josh receives an AOL CD-ROM that his mother asked him to bring over to Emma so that she can download it onto her new computer. Once downloaded on the computer, a website called Facebook pops up which allows Emma and Josh to see 15 years into their future. Every time they refresh the page, their future changes based off of what they just previously did during that day. So like I said, I was initially really drawn into this book and the concept behind it, but it was not executed the way that I wanted it to be, I guess. I just really didn't enjoy the writing style. I just found the whole thing to be very predictable and I wasn't really invested in either of the characters or what they were going through. I found Emma to be very selfish and she just pissed me off most of the time. And then Josh was a little bit more likable but I can't say I really cared about what happened to him. I just found the book to be very average and I just was not enjoying it so... I ended up giving it a 2 out of 5. And then the final book that I read I really did enjoy. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It's Sadie by Courtney Summers. I listened to this on audiobook like a lot of people do. Highly recommend it in that format. It was so, so good. But if you do not know, this book follows 19-year-old Sadie who is on a mission to avenge her 13-year-old sister's death. Following a few clues that she digs up, she goes on a road trip to find her sister's murderer. So like I said, definitely recommend the audiobook version of this. It is told through Sadie's point of view as well as a podcast. The book is just so uniquely structured. I loved that the podcast was a little bit behind Sadie's point of view so we would get little tidbits of information as we went along. I just found Sadie to be such an incredible character. You really felt her hurt and anger radiate off the pages and her character is just so well done in my opinion. The book was extremely heart-wrenching and honestly kind of hard to read but I loved every second of listening to this book. This is my first Courtney Summers book but I definitely think that I'll be picking up more of her work if it's anything like Sadie. Alright guys so those were the first five books that I read in the month of March 2019. I will have my next wrap-up up, up sometime soon but that will be the last six that I read. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these and what you thought of them and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!